I recently finished reading Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, and I've seen a lot of information, videos, and just ideas about Stoicism in general, which is a lot of what's covered in this book. The whole thing with Meditations is it's him writing down his thoughts. It's almost somewhat of a journal, and it can be pretty sporadic, but there's a lot of reoccurring themes on this. Stoicism in general has gotten a lot more attention of late, I feel, and some people take the good with it without talking about the bad per se. So I kind of want to do a breakdown of everything I've noticed from this book. One of the biggest reoccurring themes that I noticed was living your life in accordance with nature and being of use to society and uh, to all your fellow men and women. And this get, got talked about pretty often. So Meditations has 12 chapters. And I would say multiple times in each chapter did he bring this up and talk about it. Sometimes it was briefly and sometimes he got more into it. The thing with it is because it's written somewhat as a journal, there's moments where it seems like he's reflective and talking about the ideas more. And there's moments where he seems to just kind of jot down a quick idea. Sometimes it comes across as him being impatient and sometimes it doesn't. And that goes into some of the other topics as well. One of the things that was brought up pretty regularly, and I, I thought of it, there, there's good and bad to this, but he would talk about how short life is, how temporary existence is, uh, how a human's life is just a speck in the grand scheme of things. And he's right. I mean, if you zoom out and look at the universe, the earth in general, the time of our lives is so brief that when you keep zooming out, it becomes less and less significant. I understand using that to never get too worried about things, which he does talk about in there, but there's some aspects of it that come across as almost nihilistic and kind of pessimistic, where he just talks about it as if it doesn't matter in the long term. And I think, I think his point is valid, but the problem with it is depending on how far you zoom out, over time, anything becomes meaningless. You know, if you're like, well, in the grand scheme of 4 billion years, me winning a Super Bowl is not a big deal. And it's like, well, yeah, you're right, but it's a big deal to you and to a lot of people who say like football. I think, at least in some of his uh, notes and meditations, he seems to get a bit carried away on this. And I don't think that gets talked about much in Stoicism um, when people bring it up in, in videos or in, ta in, in conversations or, or articles or whatnot. So I, I wanted to talk about that briefly. One of the things that he did talk about, which I really do agree with, and he said this many times, was, paraphrasing, don't worry about what other people think of you, just do your duty. For him, I think that's also pretty easy because this guy's the emperor, okay? This guy has things that are huge scale, in his lifetime that are important. For each of us, I think we can get a little distracted by everyday things, and I'm sure he had his own temptations. I'm not coming after this guy. But the whole idea of not worrying about other people and what they think of you as you do your job resonates, I think, with all of us, especially you can get caught up in other people's lives and you can get worried about what each and every person's doing. And I think this is a good, a good reminder that doing that's not necessarily a good thing. And this makes me want to go over to one of the quotes that I read in the book. So I'm going to pull it out here in a second. At the break of day, when you are reluctant to get up, have this thought ready to mind. I'm getting up for a man's work. Do I still then resent it? If I'm going out to do what I was born for, the purpose for which I was brought into the world, or was I created to wrap myself in blankets and keep warm? But this is more pleasant. Were you then born for pleasure? All for feeling, not for action. Can you not see plants, birds, ants, spiders, bees, all doing their own work, each helping in their own way to order the world? And then you do not want to do the work of a human being. You do not hurry to the demands of your own nature. But one needs rest too. One does indeed, I agree. But nature has set limits to this, just as it has to eating and drinking. And yet you go beyond these limits, beyond what you need. Not in your actions, though. Not any longer. Here you stay below your capability. 
when I read that, I was thinking how true that is for each of us. Every start to the day, you know, you're getting out of bed. I would say for myself more than not, I'm usually more tired than I'd like to be. Seeing that and reminding myself I have purposes or I have a purpose, I have things to do, and to just start knocking out those things, reminding that that's my duty both to myself, my family, and to humanity in general. So this is the part where zooming out on that big scale, what he talks about, can be useful sometimes. There's some times where he'll talk about nature or the things in nature, and he comes across as a bit uncaring or a bit not appreciative of the kind of beauty and art that is in nature and in, in other things in life. But he also seems to almost contradict himself sometimes where he does appreciate the little things significantly. Like he'll appreciate how a stalk of wheat looks and how planted it grows and it dies and, and that's life, that's the beauty of life. He talks about how when a bread is baked, you'll see the cracks in the bread and, and how that adds to the beauty of a freshly baked loaf. And it's things like that where it, when I read it, I'm assuming it just depended on the day, the month, the week, whatever he was going through and whatever his mood was, that it somewhat affects how he sees the world. Because there's some passages where he comes across as, like I said, a bit nihilistic, a bit uncaring. And then there's some other passages where he seems to really enjoy the very small things of everyday life and to appreciate those things as maybe he's going on a walk or maybe he just saw it, sat down and wrote that down. So it's kind of an interesting take, it's a little back and forth. And and when I read that, I try to keep in mind that this book is somewhat of a journal. You know, it wasn't necessarily meant to be read by other people. It's just his thoughts as he as he jots them down. Another thing that he goes over pretty often is how life repeats. In one of the passages, he said how if you're a 40-year-old man, you've seen everything there is to see in life. Now, to me, that comes across as a bit pessimistic. And it's interesting because... He said it multiple times throughout the books, throughout the chapters. So I do think it's in a big part of his belief system, a big part of how he views the world, where it does repeat, it does continually do the same thing. And he would say to zoom out and look above as if from the heavens and see all of humanity scurrying about and doing their thing. And after watching, you'd see that we do the same thing over and over again. Yes, that's true. But... It's interesting because he seems to appreciate the beauty of small things, but also the monotony seems to kind of get him down a bit here. Does a 40-year-old man see and do everything in life there is to do or see? No, of course not. So that part of it was kind of threw me off a little bit. But again, I kind of see where he's getting from from the huge scale. You know, if the more you zoom out, the more unimportant things become. Is that the best way to live? I don't know. I'm just kind of doing a little breakdown. Another thing he would talk about is having a duty to care for your fellow man and being a positive in society. Obviously, depending on your role in society, I'm speaking to all of us, it can significantly affect how you view the world. You know, if you are the emperor, as in his case, you're going to appreciate the mass amount of, well, maybe not appreciate, you're going to feel the mass amount of responsibility that you have on your shoulders. And I would guess that you're going to feel more inclined to feel that your purpose is a difference maker. For some of us in life, that might not be the case. But I get where he's coming from with this. You know, doing something of use, doing something positive, and making sure that you do that, and you do it unreluctantly. You know, it's your duty. You know, people can get caught up in what you want to do, and what you don't want to do. But ultimately, he's saying, just do the right thing, do the, the, the good thing. And that's how life is supposed to be. He talks about this a lot where you shouldn't chase pleasure. You shouldn't chase certain like success goals. You should do the right thing and the best thing. He makes it sound very simple sometimes. And it's like, well, yeah, of course. But I think overall that, that is something all of us can appreciate and, and hope to achieve. You know, if you're always looking to do the right thing, if you're always looking to do the good thing, you can't really look back and be disappointed with what you've done. Because he seems to do that here in a few passages where he'll talk about kind of failing his task. He does it in a roundabout way because he's talking to himself. 
but it seems like he's talking about the failures he's had in life. Another thing that's clear when reading this book is his belief in the gods. But I do think a lot of what he says, he kind of breaks down in a way that regardless of what your belief system is, you can understand where he's coming from and you can take action according to what he's talking about. And he said before in a few of the passages where if there is, and he, he's, it's funny because he's talking to himself, he said, if there are gods, then I should do the best that I can do. I should be as good as I can be because there is something after this. On the flip side, he's also said, if there's not anything after this, if we're all just atoms and particles in life, why should I still not do the good in life? Why should I still not be as good as I can be? Give myself a purpose. So it's kind of interesting because no matter what you believe, he's still pushing for being a positive impact in the world, a positive role in society. And I just thought that was kind of interesting because I do feel that a lot of people, based on what you believe, you know, what you think happens after life or whatever, it'll change how you view life and how you live your life. And basically what he's saying is it doesn't matter because no matter what, you should strive for the good. So it was just an interesting take. And I, I thought it had some, it's a view that I don't hear very often, especially nowadays. So I just thought it was interesting to note. I have one last bit here and it's another quote from the book. I thought this was a very interesting quote. And when I read it again, it was one of those that kind of stuck with me. Let no one have the chance to accuse you with any truth of not being sincere or a good man. Make sure that anyone taking this view of you is a liar. This is wholly up to you. Who is there to prevent you from being good and sincere? You must decide to live no longer if you won't have these qualities. And reason too abandons the man who won't. So just kind of interesting, like if someone is talking poorly of you, someone is talking bad, make sure that there are liars. And it's like, we want that to be the case, of course, but is it always the case? I would say probably not for a lot of us. You know, we wish we could say, well, so-and-so is a piece of junk. Of course they hate me. It's like, well, do they have a point though? You know, make sure they have a point or sorry, make sure they don't have a point because you want to make sure they're the liar, not yourself. That's all I got for you guys. I thought it was a real interesting book. I do recommend reading it. Anytime any person reads a book and does a summary or a breakdown, it's always their perspective. You know, it's my perspective on this book as well. I chose things that I enjoyed reading about and I chose things that spoke to me. I recommend reading it and seeing how it speaks to you as well. And there might be some other things that you notice or that you enjoyed reading about more and some of the qualities that I haven't talked about because they just didn't pop out to me, might pop out to you. So I recommend giving it a try, guys. Uh, until next time, I'll see you later. Take it easy.